it must seem a long time to you now, the eight years since I Killed My Mother came yeah, out. Um, it does. How, how do you look back on that time now and that film? It's a little hard for me to, to watch it, to see it, because I find it infinitely annoying. Oh no, how come? Uh, I don't know, well, you see yourself, you see the flaws, you see the, the, the clumsiness, the, the... I get it, I get that some people love the, 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 the film and I don't want to take anything, I don't want to disrespect their interest for that, for that movie, but of course, when you... When the, to me, the only purpose that I have is to get better. Mm -hmm. When you're passionate about something, you give your all mm -hmm. and I give everything to this. I give all my time, I give all my energy mm -hmm. and the thing is, you learn, when you, when you are surrounded by other artists, like I try to surround myself with people that I respect, a cinematographer, production designer, actors, artists, these people teach you a lot of things and you learn about yourself and you suddenly see your mistakes and you make a lot of mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes. And it's just my job, I think, to be better as an artist. So of course, when I watch I Killed My Mother, I see another person, I see another artist, I see someone, I, I know, I know where I was and who I was then. I walked on that set, I had never directed a short, and I was like, well, we should probably just rip off Juan Carwai's score of, of In the Mood for Love. It just, <laughs> that's probably the right thing to do. And why just try to, you know, pretend like it's just inspired us. Let's just literally rip it off. We're borrowing it, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's just, what I listen to now, I'm like, wow, you're a thief. You're like, it's, I, I'm a fraud. When you look back on you then, do you feel sympathy for him? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, there's, there's some charisma, I guess, in, in those mistakes, and at least they're honest. I can tell you, I had no pretension whatsoever to, I believed in this movie, mm -hmm. and I had the arrogance to tell people, we're gonna go to Cannes, we're gonna go to Cannes, we're, but I, it was all honest. Mm -hmm. It was all, and I didn't know how to do things, and I had seen, very few films and still have to this day. So you did everything on How I, um, I Killed My Mother. You not only well, directed it, you wrote it, you starred in it, you did costumes, right? I mean, yeah. is that the way you still work now? Do you yeah. still like to have your hand on everything? People think that I'm a control freak, and I am, but then I want to say, of course I am. I'm a director mm -hmm. and, and my job is to combine all of these departments and make decisions mm -hmm. and choose what's best for our story and, and the way we're telling it. It's not because I don't believe in, any, in, in someone else, or I'd, it's because I just hadn't met the right person to do the costumes and also because it is a passion mm -hmm. that I have. I love fashion a lot, it's interesting, clearly, look at me, uh, <laughs> and, it's, it's, and that's why I do it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a cinematographer, I'm not a production designer, but my production designer and I work together and I will choose the wallpaper and, and the, the cushions and mm -hmm. the rug and the, the, the little trinkets that are, that are in the, the light, on the shelves and on the, it's my job. Yeah. Of course, you surround yourself, like I said before, with artists who criticize you and who are able to have a conversation with you and tell you, that's a bad idea, mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's bad you've strayed, you've, and you're like, you think so? And you, like Andre, my, my cinematographer, Andre will, will <laughs> like tell me, hmm, very interesting choice. I mean, if you were 15, but, um, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well. Uh, Critics have sometimes reviewed your films as if they're reviewing you. Do you feel that's fair? Do you feel that's true? Do you sort of? I feel it's true, but I don't feel it's fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course it's not fair. And can you elaborate on that? How, like, how so? Why not? There's a certain point where you feel that there's this, like, that the media is straying from the actual task of, of reviewing a movie and analyzing a movie uh, because they're whoring for likes. Hmm. Some of them, not all of them. Uh, Twitter is a dangerous and toxic thing. Uh, it makes you want to be loved and heard and then suddenly uh, you have a lot of attention and people like it and you are the first to hate or like or and this spirit of 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 combining the fame you are craving to the passion you have for reviewing something is sometimes an odd uh, mix and I don't want to know 
what my psychological problems are as a human being. I just want to know if you like my movie or not. Do you let yourself believe the good things that people say about you? No. There's no growth from worship and from compliments and flattery. It's amazing and it's great. And, and people are kind to you. And kindness is something you have to appreciate because it's not, I, I want to take nothing for granted. Um, but it's true that it's of no use to me to think that person told me that I had succeeded in doing this or this or this or this. I really want to know where I failed. That's, that's what will change the rest of my life. You're finishing your seventh feature, The Death and Life of John F. Donovan. You've been working on that for a long time, right? Yes, 10 years. 10 years. And talk about the beginning of that a little bit. Like, what, where did the idea come from? I think for a very long time, I wanted to tell the story of, 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 a, of an artist struggling with identity, with his identity. How you can be an artist and how art changes you, but not art, but really fame and celebrity. And I had, I've had this idea for a very long time, way before most of the things that happened to me happened to me. So I felt the need to talk about this industry, to talk about how the, what the public expects from you and how it, it, it changes your life. I, I, I was brought up watching TV, like all the shows and the WB, and worshipped all those young actors hmm. and actresses of, of my teenage years. Mm -hmm. I would write letters to them. I, would, I was really a wow. real fan. And so I always had the desire to tell a story about admiration. Hmm. And that's what The Death and Life of John F. Donovan is about. Wow. They're a kid admiring a man who's trying to have a career and also you know, live his dream and live his career at once and be himself and realizes that these things are not always compatible. Hmm. It's interesting that you had this idea so long ago and you've only become, you've only had more and more experience with this subject yourself as you've gotten closer and closer to making it. Did, didn't your experience of fame live up to what you thought it was going to be? Did it then inform the movie as you went along? Sure, of course. Uh, but the part of the movie that, 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 that my life's informed more than any other part is, of course, the part of the child who's in the position of admiring someone more than this, because this actor is, is clearly a, a star uh, in, in the, in, and so when I started writing Donovan, I, I, I mean, I can guess, I can use my imagination and I can, but he's never been the figure I identified to. Wow. So this is your first English language film. It has a raft of Hollywood stars, Jessica Chastain, Susan Sarandon, Natalie Portman. Um, does that change the way you work? It didn't change anything. It's what changes is the the scope, the 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 scale of the movie has changed, but not because of the actors. These actors and actresses believed in in the script, and 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 we had this relationship, and they came here in Montreal because they wanted to be here. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are asking me that. A lot of people are sort of taking for granted that, that uh, it, it will have been tough with actors. They're like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> it, those are immense uh, creators. Mm -hmm. They've created things that have uh, marked our imag imagination and our uh, and, and art. Uh, and so it was a privilege, obviously, to work with them. But the real privilege is that we all speak the same language, which is that of, of storytelling. A lot of Quebec directors have gone to Hollywood. It seems like you are bringing Hollywood here. Um, <laughs> how is that working out and, and, and what are you finding? Uh, I'm finding that, I, I, it, to me, it, it's not the destination, it's the people you work with. I, all I want to do in life is work with artists that I admire. Uh, it's, all, it's all that matters to me. What I mean is, is I love big movies and blockbusters, and like I, I would love to direct a Star Wars, or I would love to direct, like I would love this. I would love this. I love that kind of storytelling. Do I need it? No. No. Yeah. I'm happy here. I bought a house here. I have my friends, my family. I'm gonna buy a dog. For me, it's 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 not a sign of of success to be to be working in Hollywood, that success is freedom. 
what I need to do to feel like I'm moving forward in my life and living my life is simply to write stories and, and make movies with people that I love. It can be anywhere in the world, but I need to come back home. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming and talking to us. It's been a huge pleasure, and uh, I'm, it's great to see I Killed My Mother again, and I can't wait to see the next one. Pleasure meeting you. Yeah. Thank you. Likewise.